But how many take the same time? Actually, it ought to be more. But how many even take the same time to develop their spirit? And this is the real man. The physical body is not the real man. You feed yourself three meals a day, some of you four or five. You have all kinds of gadgets for your physical exercise. But you forget your Bible till Sunday morning. Some don't even take it Sunday morning. And I'm coming for you in a moment. <laughs> your spirit is the real man. Praise God. Tell somebody close to you, your spirit is the real man. See, brothers and sisters, success or failure is in our spirits. Of what use is it for a man to become so great? Ten degrees. Five PhDs, the DDDs. And nothing wrong with the academics. And then he goes in and becomes a basketballer and trains from there to become a, a wrestler and then acts boxing to it and then uh, uh, he, he is good in lawn tennis. Think about five, ten spots. He is superb. He's done everything. He knows all of this. You know what? One day, he'll pass out of this world and all that will be left is history. What impact did he make in the lives of men? Secondly, what is he going to say to his creator? And the Bible says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. At the time of writing, youths were about 60 years old. Are you still here? So if you were 60, you were a youth then. And you know, Man's lifespan has gotten shorter and shorter, shorter and shorter. You know why? You know why men don't live as long as they used to? Do you realize they don't live as long as they used to? Why? Did God change? No. Man is continually inventing new sins. Yes. And sin is what cuts a man's life. There's so much sin in the world. And we keep inventing new ones. And the more we invent them, the shorter the lifespan of man. Praise God. But I want to begin to show you from today's subject what to do with your life according to God's Word. And leave happy, fulfilled, joyful, walking in God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to be 90 years old before you stop and say, let me find out whether I've been a success. No, you can be a success at every stage. Success is a now life. All right? It is a now life. It's not history. It's a now life. And you know, when the Bible talks about success, it talks about permanent success. Permanent. Not going up to come down. There's a lot of people who go up to come down. And, and, and you know, most people in the world, that's their story. They go up to come down. So there are lots of has-beens, have-beens, 
and so on, used to be, so on. X, 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 Foma, Foma, Foma. Praise the Lord. But life can be more fulfilling than that. Amen. Why do things happen to different people? Why especially God's children? They said the boss was traveling. There were 15 people inside. Three people died. And the three of them were born again. The other 12 didn't even know God. Why did the three die? I may not be able to give you all the answers. Because God has all the answers. And we have to study some more to find out all of what we haven't known. But surely... There's something about God we need to come to understand, and that is, the Bible says, God is good. You have to settle that in your heart. God is good. Settle that in your heart forever. God is good. Say that with me. God is good. Say it again. God is good. All right. Somebody had a baby. The child grew up three years, three years old and slept one night and didn't wake up and died. And somebody said, well, God walks in mysterious ways. We never know the will of God. The Lord has given And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a slap on the face of God. (laughs) The Bible says God is good. Why will he let a woman carry a pregnancy for nine months? Give birth to that child. Let you have that child for three years and come like a hawk and pick the child up in the night time. What kind of a good God is that? You think God loves it to see people mourning? What kind of a good God is that? They say, well, we cannot interpret God. That's the lie of the devil. That's what the devil has made many Christians believe for so long. They will not accept their lack of knowledge. They want to believe that this God Almighty, because we can't stand against Him. We don't know where He's coming from or where God is mysterious, they say. So, God has become a killer. What kind of a God do you serve? I serve the God who brought Jesus to this world. To die for us. And He gave us an example. He was touched when He saw that widow woman. Whose son, whose only son died. Jesus was touched. He was on his journey going someplace else when he saw her. And stopped. And went and raised the man, the young man, the son of the widow. And gave him back to her. That's the kind of God I serve. The one who was, who was touched when the noble man said, My daughter is dying. Please come help me. Jairus. He invited Jesus, please come and help me. Jesus wasn't too busy. He said, all right, I'll go with you. And raise that little girl from the dead. Even the nobleman's son, another one, who was sick and dying, Jesus gave the word. He was touched. A poor woman was dying. She used to be rich. She spent all her money on doctors for 12 long years and became poor from paying them. That's what the Bible says. She came and taught Jesus. She was healed, but there was more. Jesus called her and made her whole. Ten lepers came to Jesus. They were outcasts. They were crying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus healed them. Gave them new bodies. Even the maimed were healed. 
those who had their limbs amputated, they were healed. That's the kind of God that I serve. The one who was touched at the grave of Lazarus. The Bible says he wept. He was moved to tears. And then came to the entrance of that cave and called him by name and said, Lazarus, come out. And the Bible says he that was dead came out. That's the kind of God that I serve. Do you understand? That's the one I believe in. The Bible says he's touched with the feeling of our infirmity. He's touched with it. That's the God that I serve. The God who is moved when somebody loses his job. He's moved. That's the God I serve. But you know, a lot of us, we got answers for everything. And we always, oh well, God works in mysterious ways. He took your job. Yeah, He's taking their jobs. He's taking their husbands. He's taking their wives and their children, killing everybody. And they say, God's doing it. Yeah, He's taking them to heaven because He needs a greater population in heaven. What kind of a God do you serve? Some people say divine healing is not for today. There are no real miracles today anymore. Ha, thank you for your announcement that God has changed. God was loving back in those days. Why did He heal them? He loved them, that's why He healed them. You mean He's changed? He doesn't want to heal us anymore. He's changed? What kind of a God do you serve? He says, my people suffer. For the lack of knowledge. The Bible says he raises the poor out of the dust. That's the God that I serve. He doesn't want you wallowing in the mud. He'll pick you up. Clean you out. Make your prince. Glory to God. That's the God that I serve. Hallelujah. That's the one I serve. There are a lot of people serving some other kind of God. Who kills them? A murderous God. And yet Jesus said the devil is the murderer. But we accuse God. Because we learned a lot of funny things from Job. You know, Job has been given to us as a wonderful example. But we have to understand that the only good thing that was shown to us in the New Testament about Job was his patience. We can learn patience from Job. Job was a man. Can I, can, I, can I show you a little about Job? Come on here. Are you ready with me now? Turn to the book of Proverbs to begin with. Proverbs. Chapter number one. And verse 33. You know, you can be faithful. Listen to me. Faith and faithfulness are not the same. Hey, look up now. Hear me say it again. Faith and faithfulness are not the same. Hello, hello, hello. We'll say it again. Faith and faithfulness are not the same. Too many of God's children confuse faithfulness with faith. Faithfulness is serving God. You come to the house of God. You do all the nice things that God said to do. You go on evangelism. You win souls. You pray consistently. You're a great intercessor. You don't even commit sins. You are faithful. You can be trusted. Anything that is given to you to do is done perfectly. You are trustworthy. That's faithfulness. You can be counted on. And there are many Christians like that. So, because of that, they do not understand why. Are these things happening to me? Why does the devil have a field day in my family? Why? They want to know why. 
I've been faithful to God. I give my tithes. I give my offerings. I do this and I do that. I'm faithful to God. What is it that I have not done? And they cry and they break down there. <laughs> Why? In the last 55 years, I've been serving God. Why? Why is this happening to me? Why? They say, why has God done this to me? Why? The most popular question in heaven is, why? Why? It's, oh God, why? 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 The whole house burnt. Why? What I, I've, I, my whole life, <laughs> Everything is gone. Why? Listen, I'm outside serving God. I expected God to take care of everything that belongs to me over here. I'm, I'm doing what God wants me to do. Why is God not taking charge of whatever I've left in this? Why? Some get sick and they ask God, why? Why am I sick? I'm serving you. I'm doing everything you want me to do. Why am I sick? <laughs> why? Why? Somebody say, why? why? I want to tell you why. <laughs> Faith and faithfulness are not the same. They're not the same. Faithfulness is good. It is honorable. It is required, but it will not substitute faith. For the Bible says in Hebrews 11:6, without faith it is impossible to please God. He doesn't say without faithfulness. It is without faith, he says. Faith is a required necessity. Sounds like tautology. But it is to strengthen that word. All right. You with me? Now, while you have that in your mind, I want you to go to Proverbs chapter number 1, and I'm reading verse 33. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. But whoso, <laughs> whoso hearkeneth unto me, did you hear that? What is it to hearken? It means simply to hear to do. Hearing to do is what it means to hearken. Hearing to do. Not just to hear. To hear for the purpose of doing. So he says, Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Now I want you to mark that scripture. It is very, very, very important. He says, Anybody who hearkens to me shall dwell safely. Safely shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. From fear of harm. From fear of evil. Destruction. Devastation. Whoso hearkeneth unto me, and I said, to hearken means to hear to do. Hearing to do. Hearing for the purpose of doing. Say, I hear to do. Good. Now, that's what God said. He said, anybody who hearkens to me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Now, I want you to mark one, hearkening to God, making you dwell safely, and also being quiet from fear of evil. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Now, you remember uh, the rich young ruler in the Bible who came to Jesus and said to him, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, um, you know the commandments. Thou shall not do this, and thou shall not do that, and thou shall do, and thou shall do, and so on and so forth. Then the man said something. Listen, he was rich. All right? And he came to Jesus and said, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus gave him the commandments and said, you know the commandments. Do this. And the man said, I have done all this from my youth. That's what made him rich. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Are you following what I'm telling you? That's what made him rich. He said to Jesus, he wasn't lying. Jesus gave him the commandments and said, go and keep these commandments and you shall leave. And he said, I have kept all these ones from my youth. And according to the law of Moses, if you kept all those commandments, God would make you rich. So the man was rich from keeping those commandments. I had a reason for telling you that. All right. Now, he said, anybody who hearkens to me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. 